You'll have to excuse the enthusiasm level today. <laughs> I got COVID, did the test last night, I got COVID, so. A couple of days of sitting around doing nothing, sweating like a demon, but might as well use the time for answering some questions that we get asked all the time. So a lot of them are how to rig soft plastics, how to use the powder coat, stuff like that. So we'll do a few different videos and hopefully we'll answer some questions for you. Right, so everyone knows that we don't throw a jig head unless there's some sort of um, colour on it, like contrast on it. So this is how you do it. It's pretty easy. This stuff's called Protect Powder Coat. There's a couple of different ones. Um, we've just got a heap more in at the fishing warehouse now. So if you need to get hold of it, we've finally got some more. But all you do, is, first of all, when you get it, you got to turn it upside down. Like that. Tap on the bottom until it all drops away from the bottom and then just roll it and tap it just to loosen the powder up. Like that. Alright, open him up, get out a jig head. Now obviously the more lead that's in a jig head, the more heat you have to give it. I find these blowtorch ones to be the best. Around about 3 or 4 seconds is all it needs. Dip it in the powder coat. Alright, now if it doesn't gloss off straight away, you can just give it a quick hit like that. No one's done. And you don't want to overheat them. If you overheat them, you'll melt the lead with these little blowtorch lighters. So this time we'll give it a little bit more heat. Like that. And then dip it in there, pull it out, and we don't have to gloss it off then. But it's a very fine line with the, with the lighter heads. It's a very fine line between too much heat where you melt the lead and it drops off and be just right, so that's pretty good there. One thing I used to do wrong was I used to get all my jig heads out and I'd do pinks and greens and oranges and all that sort of stuff and I'd put them all in segments in a tackle box and I thought that was a good idea to have them all already done but what happened was when they're in a tackle box and you're going through rough waves they all bang together against each other and chip the powder coat off you know, little bit by little bit over time so we just put them back in the packets now even little hooks like these number one 132nd ounce EWGs, which is that size there, we put powder coat on them too, but it takes bugger all heat. You don't want to melt the lead on them. But when you rig that under a natural coloured plastic like you know, Carolina pumpkin or something like that, then uh, the contrast, that little hot spot underneath the plastic really does get fish's attention. So yeah, we'll do a packet of them. So let's say that you hook you heat the eye up too much of the hook like that, and all your powder coat sticks to the eye as well and glugs your eye out. Like that. And see how your eye is not got a clean hold, just get a piece of wire while it's soft and hot, poke it through. Get rid of your excess, and now your hole's clean. So to do your weedless hooks, it's just a matter of holding the hook, heating the lead up, and then when you've got the lead at the right heat, dip it in there, tap off the excess, and because it's only the lead that's hot, and not the hook, it'll stick to the hook. No, it'll stick to the lead, not the hook. Be a little string off the side or a little lump, you can just tap it flat with your finger. We'll quite often do <coughs> half a packet in yellow and half a packet in orange or half a packet in pink, half a packet in green. So that way 
you've got the right colors for the watercolor that you're fishing and there is definitely patterns for that too and the patterns generally see how that side's not quite hasn't got the same coverage I just heat him up a little bit like that and then just dip him again she's all good but yeah there's definite patterns to the colors like color powder coat for the color water and you know, pinks and orange is good for dirty water yellows and greens are good for clean water The pink is, um, it's probably, and green I suppose as well, uh, probably what you would call happy medium colours where there's definite patterns, as I was saying a second ago, there's definite patterns as to colours, but above all else what it does is it gives a contrast between the jig head <coughs> and the soft plastic, so if you've got like a, a natural coloured like this, like a, a prong, and you add green underneath that for clear water is great. You know, that under a, a brighter colour is good for dirty water, like things like the radioactive rooster for dirty water. But as long as this, as long as this powder coat puts contrast against the belly of the soft plastic, any fish that's looking from underneath can see what they call a hot spot, which is a an animal or a piece of a crustacean or a bait fish or whatever with a hot spot on it, which means it's injured. And anything that's injured in nature always the first to get eaten. So all you're doing is you're making your lure look like an easy target. So that's sort of the contrast between the, the body and the head. Now that yellow for some reason for us has a bit of a, a, um, a tendency to be really successful on things like trout and finger mark. I don't know why, but different fish have different preferences. So yeah, if that's your species, then try the yellow. So as you can see, there's no limit to what size jig heads you can do in it. These just take a lot more heat to uh, get the powder coat to mold onto them. But the reason you've got so many different hook sizes with different head weights and all that sort of stuff is this sort of thing here. Right, that's a one-sixth of an ounce on a 5.0 hook. That's the sort of thing that we would use in really shallow water, you know, less than a metre deep for fishing things like um, prongs or paddle prawns stuff like that just under the surface you know when fish are feeding on stuff on the surface you don't want your lure to sink to the bottom too quick where that head there way heavier that's good for deep water but no good in the shallow water so I'm going to show you how to rig one of these up weedless we always get asked how to do this weedless so first of all these are your, your normal soft plastic material not too stretchy we've got a very lifelike action in the water so those little tails we want flapping away at the back so you've got to get the right head weight so that there that's a clear it's called ghost pearl with a, it's got a, like a blue pearlescent tinge to it really good clear water lure so what we do with that one is we pick a yellow head and, get one out of there. and quite easy to rig that little spring i usually unclip that spring like that because usually they come through from underneath and I'll clip it in on top of the hook like that. There's a little dent in the nose of the soft plastic there, so basically just push it in, turn it, and then screw it in. Once you've got the screw part right inside the head, then you just turn it around, line it up with the side, so that that just tucks in behind that R bend there. Measure where the hook comes to, so we know the hook comes to there. We'll go through there, bring it out in the middle of the back, like that and that's now set weedless so I can fish that over snags in shallow water or rock bars or any of that sort of stuff so really effective so these ones are made out of RST material so these are a Halco paddle prawn so what we do with these is same deal spin the spring over in the eye of the hook but because this is super stretchy material you've got to actually push it inside the hook pinch it between your thumb and your finger and then spin the spring around like that once it's screwed inside like that roll it up the side of the hook exactly the same again don't stretch the body out like that and put the hook in it because it won't lay flat Just sort of hold it firm bend it through there out in the middle of the back and that's set weedless Okay, so 
when you're rigging these up, obviously you can rig them up with the spring like we did that one before. Now, just a quick thing here, it's going to save you money. Don't rest them against each other. Two different materials. This is uh, plastisol. This stuff is RST material. There's a chemical reaction between the two. If you leave them resting up against each other every night, put in your tackle box or something like that, they're going to come out a melted ball of snot. So keep them in their own segments or put them back in their old packets. Now, when you want a really compact presentation, like we fish a lot of these seven inch paddle prawns, we fish a lot of these on the surface for big barrows and stuff like that. So what we want to do is we want to make this a fairly concealed presentation. So I want to do away with the spring. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the nose there like that. And I'm going to bring the hook out a little bit further than you normally would, like that. So you can see how far down in the belly we've come. Just on here, just put a little bit of saliva on it like that so it lubricates it and then just push it so it goes up over that lead weight like that get the r bend and you just keep pushing it up like that roll it over and then just give it a little squeeze like that so the eye goes back inside the soft plastic and then just measure where your hook comes to same as normal mark it where it comes to through the belly out in the middle of the back like that and then that all sits flat now the reason I've done this is because with RST material when there's moisture between the, the plastic and the hook itself it tends to slip down the shank of the hook and bunch up so in other words what it does is it, it does that when you cast it so it ends up being a really crappy looking presentation so we're gonna sit that up behind the R bend we're gonna get a leader material this is 40 pound fluorocarbon, dangling, dangling fluorocarbon and you're going to cut that on a needle point like that and you're just going to do an overhand knot like that you're going to push it through the plastic through the eye and then out the other side of the plastic like that test it, make sure that the eye that it's gone through the eye, I know that when I push the plastic it starts to bend the leader so I know I've gone through the eye of the hook there Okay, so all you do then is just finish your loop knot off. So back through that loop, slide it down close to the eye of the hook, not too close because you still want a hinge point there. So one, two, three, back through that loop like that, lock him down. Right, so lock him down nice and neat like that. And now everything's pinned together so I can cast that and there's nothing's going to slide down a bunch up anywhere. That little head weight is, is tiny but what it does is it helps you it helps keep your plastic on a, on a faster retrieve, it helps stopping it from rolling over like that, That little just that little bit of lead there. But from underneath you can see what we mean about that contrast, that's where the fish is looking from underneath. There's another compulsion for people, and I know it's been written about a lot of times, where you can push the plastic forward, slide the hook point underneath like that, and that'll make it super weedless, which it does. You can wind it through some pretty ordinary stuff, but it doesn't compress when a fish hits it. You've got to strike really hard to get that hook to actually penetrate the plastic and go, go into the fish's mouth. So I don't like that presentation at all. I'd rather risk the odd snag and have a better hook-up ratio because when they suck these in, the plastic goes down the hook like that when they suck it in and you've got a really good hook exposure. And you can do this with any size hook. That's a 7OEWG and that's a 7-inch paddle prawn. So it's, uh, it's, it's quite, a, quite a good size for that. And I mean, we land a lot of big fish on that. So it's a, it's a Gamma Katsu hook. So it's about as strong as hooks can get and sharp as hooks can get. It's hardly any heat, eh? And it cools down, being that little amount of lead, it cools down really quick. So you just wipe the excess off, you can tap it on the side and get some of the excess off. That one hasn't had quite enough heat on it, so we'll just heat him up a little bit more. If you do this with a normal lighter, you'll get black soot. 
black soot come off the flame like a big yellow flame off like a big lighter or something like that so the blue the blue flame on these things is, is much better for doing this sort of stuff you get the heat right this glosses off where well. 